In this video, we're going to go over the MCAT critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the exam. The MCAT card section is the second section of the exam. It's unique among the four sections of the exam in that it's the only section that doesn't require any content knowledge. You simply have passages on social studies and humanities topics and then questions associated with those passages. The questions are 30% foundations of comprehension, 30% reasoning within the text, and 40% reasoning beyond the text. Foundations of comprehension questions are simply asking what the text is saying. So a common question stem would be, what does the passage say about X topic? Reasoning within the text questions require you to be able to follow the author's argument as you're reading the text. So here you do have to be able to do a bit of analysis. So a common reasoning within the text question stem would be, why does the author mention X topic? Reasoning beyond the text questions asks you to make extrapolations from passage information or to consider how new information affects information mentioned in the passage. So a common reasoning beyond the text question stem is which of the following, if true, would most weaken the author's argument about X topic? All right. Now, the MCAT card section is very challenging for a lot of students. So here are a few tips on how you can improve your MCAT card score. First, you should try to read texts that are similar to MCAT card passages on a regular basis. There are a couple reasons why this is important. First, I know that many of you as pre-medical students are used to reading science textbooks for your biology, chemistry, and physics classes. The problem though is that the way that you read those science textbooks is very different from the, read, the way that you read texts like MCAT cars pastures. Another reason why it's important is that if you're not used to reading MCAT cars like texts, then you're going to get to these passages, you're gonna read them, and you're gonna find them very boring. And if you find them very boring, then you're not going to be able to engage yourself with the passage and be able to understand what's going on. Another additional point that I wanna mention is that reading MCAT cards like text is important because it also helps to build up your vocabulary. Now, I don't want you to think that the MCAT card section is a vocabulary test. Certainly, you don't want to go grab a stack, a stack of flashcards and start you know, memorizing vocabulary terms. But that being said, vocabulary does help a bit because some of these texts are a bit advanced in terms of the writing. So an example of this would be uh, if you're reading a passage, if you can't tell the difference between the words precarious versus precocious, then you probably need to do some more reading. Okay, so second, another tip is to do practice passages on timed. When it comes to strategies for the MCAT card section, there are really two types of strategies. One strategy is to help improve your accuracy on the questions. The other strategy is pacing. And you really need to get the accuracy component down first. And what I mean by this is, if you can't get the accuracy that you need under on-timed conditions, well, you certainly can't expect your accuracy to suddenly go up when you start doing passages timed. So start by doing practice passages on-timed, troubleshoot your strategies for the questions and answer choices until you can get the accuracy that you want, then you can throw in the pacing component and doing timed passages. All right. Finally, another important strategy when it comes to the MCAT card section is to do a thorough review of the questions that you complete. Again, for the MCAT card section, there's no content for you to go back and review. Everything is based on the questions as well as the answer choices. Some students think that there's nothing you can do to study for the MCAT card section, but that's not true. Remember, the MCAT is a standardized exam, so that means it has to be able to produce reproducible scores from one administration to another. And in order for the AMC to do this, they have very strict guidelines for the way that their questions and answer choices are written. So that means there are general outlines for question stems, and there are the same types of trap answer choices that show up over and over again. 
So when you're doing cars practice questions, really try to analyze the question stems and the answer choices very carefully. Try to understand what makes a good answer choice and what makes a bad answer choice. And the earlier you can figure that out, the better it will be for improving your MCAT CARS score. Okay, so that's the MCAT CARS section.